All right. Good morning, guys. My name is Nicholas Sanchez. I'm the Distance Learning and School Engagement Coordinator. Today, we have a very special guest, and I'm super excited. We got Tara from San Angelo State Park, and we're going to be talking all about bison. Tara, take it away. Hey, guys. I am Tara here at San Angelo State Park, um, where we host a portion of the Texas State Bison Herd. Um, so today, I'm going to be talking to y'all about the historical significance of these creatures. They played a very important role in early, early settlement. Um, so we'll go back and start in the 1800s. Um, around that time, there was an estimated 30 million bison roaming the Great Plains. And so that's from the Mississippi River all the way over to the Rocky Mountains from Mexico to Canada. Um, so you could just look out in that field and just see like a blanket of bison. There was just endless amounts of bison. Um, so within a span of about 70 years, their numbers went from the millions to the hundreds. Uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that because um, it's one of a, it's a really important part of history and to realize why these creatures are so important to um, conservation and um, just the historical aspect of them alone is really important. Um, so in the 1800s, you have early settlers coming in. Um, they're settling in the West, they're looking to expand. Um, so they're coming from the East Coast and they're coming over. Um, and then you have your Native American tribes such as the Sioux, Comanche, um, and the Cheyenne. And so they are there, that is their primary food source. Bison were a very important animal to them. Um, they used them from their fur to their bones, um, their meat for food. They would make um, jerky, sausages, things like that. They would preserve the meat for longer periods of time. Um, and then they would use their bones for weapons, um, toys even. And then um, as well as their hides and everything, they would use them as teepee covers, tapestries, clothing. Um, so it was a very important resource for them. And uh, they just heavily depended on all of them. So then you have early settlers coming in that are also looking for food sources. So this is kind of where the hunting starts to increase. Um, you also have certain people that want to take away that dependency that the Native Americans have on the bison and use them more um, to essentially control them and push them into reservations. So there's a lot of different aspects coming in um, that are lowering the numbers. So you have early settlers coming in, they're looking for food sources and bison are readily available. Um, they even use their scat or droppings to provide warmth um, and also cooking. And then um, you have also people just coming across and then you have the increase in hunting for meat from the East Coast. They start to get a taste for it. They really like it. And then uh, a lot of people are also willing to pay that extra money uh, to pay um, to come out and hunt. So you have an increase of hunters coming in after these beautiful creatures. And so that is also causing their numbers to decrease. And then you, um, so that's causing their numbers to decrease. And then we have more settlers coming in. The government kind of wants to cause, uh, create a more dependent relationship with Native Americans and pushing them into reservations, which is constantly decreasing the numbers of the bisons down to the thousands at this point. Um, and then you have in the 1870s, that's whenever the hunting really took, that was the, I would say like the highest increase or concentration of killings of the bison at that point. Um, you have the industrial revolution coming in, creating railroad lines, which is easily transferring hides and meat, again, increasing the hunting. Um, and so in the 1870s, you have a German tanner that discovered a really great way um, or really fast way to create leather from the hides of the bison. Um, so you have an increase of hunters coming in for that also, and they are killing bison by the thousands. Um, and they're just taking their pelts and leaving the carcass there to rot, which is uh, just taking away more food sources for Native Americans. And then so from the 1800s where we had 30 million down to the 1870s, we are at about 540 bison left. So you had millions and you're down to a few hundred um, and at this point, they are close to the brink of extinction. People are worried about food sources. Native Americans have been pushed into reservations and they are trying to hang on to their last resource that they can. Um, but it's just impossible when you're used to having these millions of bison roaming freely down to just a couple hundred um, in a, such a large area. So they're very, very sparse and few scattered in between. Um, so this is also when the cattle drives and the uh, longhorn drives are coming in. You have ranchers seeing these animals, and um, a really important figure in Texas history is Charles Goodnight. Um, so he believed you could create a bison and cattle breed that would do really well in the plains. Um, and a few other conservationists and ranchers ended up gathering the a couple of few remaining bison and ended up protecting them. 
Um, and so because of these conservation efforts, you have um, a few being protected that eventually turn into today where we have over, I believe it's 200,000 roaming um, in private and public lands. So we have a few, a small amount compared to the thousands that other places might have. We have about 27 here at San Angelo State Park. Uh, that we like to take care of and preserve so that you can see them. Um, and they're here in their grasslands in a native habitat that they can enjoy and roam freely and remain as wild as they can be. Um, but yeah, so they're a really important aspect. It's a key factor in history. It's important to understand all the different positives and, and negatives that these animals provided, um, just to realize how important they are culturally and uh, as a food source and stuff. So different aspects and everything that it's just important to realize how important they are as a food source and uh, to use them and respect them in that, that sense. So that you can understand why it was so important to so many people a few hundred years ago. Thank you. Uh, hey, quick question. So you guys are located at San Angelo State Park. How can we reach out? How can we view these bisons? Uh, can you let us know some information about that? Yeah. Um, so at San Angelo State Park, we have a viewing every second Saturday of the month with me. Um, so I'll be out there. Uh, our next day is January 14th and so on, the second Saturday in February and March at 10 a.m. Uh, I'll be out there talking to them about the bison and longhorns too. You'll come into our park on the south entrance off of 2288. Um, it's $4 per person and then kids 12 and under are free. Uh, so you can come in and see them then. Um, or sometimes if you're just in the park, they happen to be up by the fence and you get a cool chance to see them. But when we feed them, we'll pull them and our Texas Longhorn up to the fence. Um, and it's pretty cool to see them stampeding across and uh, they have like a big cloud of dust behind them sometimes. So it's a cool sight to see. <laughs> yeah, I've seen them firsthand. They're beautiful creatures. And I, I wanna thank you very much for the tour. Thank you much for this um, this lesson. And guys, if you want to learn more information about Texas State Parks, definitely visit San Angelo State Park. But if you want more educational content, uh, check out TPW Discover or uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife Education page. Uh, that'll be all linked in the description below. Uh, Tara, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, I guess until next time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah.